So where are we in the matrix, Jeremiah? This is uh, the third video. We greet you in the only name given amongst men of only one name, Jesus. Forget about any other name. Don't worry about it. You can get into names uh, and so forth, but and, and derivations or root meanings of Yeshua and Yah and Shua or whatever, but don't burden yourself with that in, in general. Just, just say Jesus. That's all you got to do. We greet you in that name, and uh, we have no want here. The Lord is my shepherd. We have no want for peace and, and, and joy here. Now, because the Lord is in charge. When you put the Lord in charge, you're going to have peace. You do what he says, keep your mouth basically closed, you're going to find peace. You're going to find what, what, what David said. I, I have rest for my soul. You're not going to have any want. I met a, a lady at the grocery store over, over at the convenience store, and she was just crying and sad and whatever, and I told her, I'm, I'm very sorry to hear that you're sad and everything, but I, I want to tell you something. You, you sound like you're trying to do things on your own. And what you need is you need to install the King Jesus. You need to install him. David said, I have installed my king. This is repentance and baptism and the results of becoming a Christian. You have a leader now who's going to take awfully good care of you, and you're going to be in much better shape than you were before. That's the point. And I mentioned to the lady, I'm very sorry to hear that you're in charge of your life. Americans are half Babylon and half Christian people. They're, they're confused. One minute they say God's in charge, uh, God bless you, and the next minute I'm blessed, and then the next minute they say that I'm in charge. I'm standing on my own two feet in America, you know, and put up my own bootstraps and, uh, and, and so on. That's called confusion because David said the Lord is my shepherd. This ministry, we, we hammer home here the fact that, that you're going to be serving Jesus Christ throughout eternity. You have no authoritative position. The Lord might put you in charge of some sort of under-shepherd activity, but you're not ultimately in charge. That's the point. Adam and Eve forgot about that, and it cost them heavenly heavily, pardon me, and it cost me because I'm a child of their their progeny. I, I, I'm one of the children of Adam. And I have the curse on me of them not getting in line. The Lord is my shepherd. Okay, uh, that means I have installed my king. What a powerful scripture. I haven't mentioned that scripture in this ministry, but it's huge. You need to install King Jesus. you you, you got to put him in your house. And how do you do that? Through living bread. We're going to get into that right now. The way you install your king and the Lord is your shepherd so that you don't have any want, so that you have rest, so that you have peace, is for you to eat the living bread. That's, that's, how, that's why living bread is huge for this for 2023 here. Because we talked about beauty in last year and peace and so forth, but there is no beauty or peace without living bread. Some people might, may have gotten confused by looking at beauty and God wants you to have beauty and that's wonderful, but they, but they didn't get the point that I put in these videos and in these, in these Bible lessons that there is no beauty and there is no rest and there is no peace without living bread. And living bread is you get disciplined and get in line. That's the point. We push discipline here. Paul said, a workman, that's W-O-R-K-M-A-N, a workman. We push Bible study and work here. You're not saved by work, but we push it anyway, like we're supposed to. opposite end of the spectrum when it comes to lazy and work here. We're not work freaks here. But we are work heavy here. 
hours of Bible study, doing jobs in the church, and so forth, which I do at home most of the, most of the time here, um, that's just the way we roll here. TV on for hours and so forth? No, 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 no. I've been recently getting into some basketball and so forth, but uh, the point is, is that uh, we have hours and hours and hours set aside here for serving the master here. We, we're not confused as to whether or not who's the master around here. It's not good to be confused about who the shepherd is here. That's called bad idea. You call me master and Lord, and you well said, that's, that's who I am. John's Gospel. You call me master and Lord, and that's who I am. That's me. Well, I thought you were friend and buddy. Well, I am friend and buddy, but, but first and foremost, you want to get an A in the class, uh, I'm the master. You want an A in the class? Who out there doesn't want an A for the, for the day? We're all here to get A's in this class, in, in our life. We want A's. When I went to college, I wanted A's. High school, that's when I, I, I didn't always get an A, but that's what I wanted. Is there anything wrong with you wanting to get an A in class? No. That's what you should want. Most of the students I taught in school, uh, taught, they, they wanted an A. And that was good. Now let's get into the, to the matrix here so you can get an A. Now, today's 2023 matrix, because we have 52 categories, I'm going to isolate about five or six of them, and we're going to talk about them, and then we're going to focus on number 11, okay? Pardon me. We're going to focus on number 11 here. Now, we're going to talk about New Covenant. We're going to talk about uh, sound doctrine. We're going to talk about living bread. We're going to talk about wisdom. We're going, to talk, we're going to talk about faith. And then we're going to talk about agape. And then we're going to move on to what I want to talk about uh, first and foremost at this time. This will go under category number 11. And I might put it under number 2 because uh, living bread and sound doctrine are essentially the same thing. The principles that we teach in Living Bread are essentially the same thing, but you're talking about the same components. They're a little different. On certain levels, okay? Now, New Covenant is where is the name of this ministry. And, 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 and let's talk about that. Whatever I talk about with you, I go over so that you know what we're talking about. Such as the name of this ministry is called New Covenant. And it's called New Covenant for a reason, because that's where everything basically starts in Bible study. And in sound doctrine and living bread and all of this. The scriptures are based upon now a new covenant, which means that God has a, has a report on human beings. There's a report card. There's, there is a, a proposition about your condition, and you can agree to this offer to get back together again. Reconciliation. For you to get back together and not be kicked out of the Garden of Eden. Adam and Eve were kicked out of the Garden of Eden. They were cursed. The ground was cursed, rather, and they were in a they were hurting for certain, and those are my grandparents. That's why I'm hurting for certain off and on. One of the reasons. Now here's the report card from God. Uh, uh, the book of Isaiah says. Who has believed our report? Well, this is a covenant, and it's a report, and it's from the it's from the big authority upstairs. And the Greek word for that is exousia. 
You can call it Pantocrator in Greek too. But it doesn't matter. It's the highest court. And but I say, whosoever, uh, anyone, whosoever, 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 in definite pronouns. Meaning, whosoever can make a covenant. Whosoever can take on our next category, which is the teachings of Jesus Christ. Anybody can take it on. You can come there and you can start learning. Learn of me. And that's sound doctrine. And I know that you've agreed with the covenant that the Lord is offering, his goodwill towards Adam, uh, which is an offer that's available. You can agree with the criteria and the, 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 the set and the group of teachings and commands. And that, of course, is his will and testament for you to, to fulfill the obligations of the trust fund for you to own your soul, which is the goodies. The goodies in all of this is you go up and you own your soul and it doesn't go down. That's the goodies here. That's the goal. The goal of the covenant and the doctrine in the covenant is for you to be a winner. That's the point. So it's an agreement offer to, are you going to agree with the doctrine, which is sound doctrine, the criteria, which is a, which is a in stone set of requirements. The first one is repentance and baptism. The second one is essentially living bread or to continue in humility on your knees and accepting whatever the master says without any back talk, as we say in America. I just gave you the whole gospel and we can all go home. You know, that's, that's, that's what this is all about. Do you agree to the criteria of living bread? And if you do, then you're wise. That also means that you are faithful because you put confidence in humiliation. And that confidence in humiliation is going to give you the love of God. You knelt down before the Son of the, son of the Living God, the Father told you to kneel before the Son of the Living God, and you did kneel. Now you have Father's love, and you are you are covenant compliant now. You have fulfilled the covenant agreement. You've listened to the doctrine, the teachings, and in those teachings, the main component is living bread. And if you do so, you're wise. And you're also faithful. That's why the, the Master said, who is the wise and faithful? Because they go together. You, you, you can't be wise without having confidence in, in reality. The reason why humans are, 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 are having to put confidence in reality is because they lost confidence in reality. I'll say it again. This is very important. I just put this as one of my footnotes here. The reason why people are having to go to church and have their Bible and read is because they lost it. If you lost a map to go somewhere, you need to find the map. Period. Pedagogus, paraclete in the Greek, which, is, which are fancy words for you need somebody that, to take you to where you need to go. I am the way, the truth, and the life. It doesn't get any more complicated than that. And, and, and as far as uh, what we're going to deal with in, in March, which starts tomorrow in this ministry, is we're going to get into New Covenant, which is an agreement that's available for you, that's, that's been authorized by God, and he's going to say, whosoever, but I say unto you, uh, goodwill towards you. I, I hope it works out for you that you listen and be wise. And you put confidence in reality and truth instead of you going half cocked as a hippie in the 60s in America. Whoa, bro, that's out there, dude. When I went to college, professors were telling me we need to study murder or something. That's right. Professors will tell you we need to study murder. We, it, it's actually not that bad. Or that's, that's called Babylon. That's called confusion. And I'm, I'm, in, I'm in the classroom going, hey, dude, uh, professor, uh, I didn't come here for that. I came here to uh, just get through college more or less and learn vocabulary 
And that's what I came here for. And mathematics and some engineering and some music and enjoy artwork. And that's what I came here for. And to enjoy students and coffee with uh, very nice people on campus. I didn't come here for you to go freaky deaky with uh, murder may not be a bad idea or Hitler wasn't all that bad or something. You see my point? They're just opening Pandora's box and you're like, wait a minute, I don't have time for Dante's Inferno. Excuse me, uh, will you stop the train and let me off? And for those of you interested in some of these uh, uh, secular uh, academic circles, I have some lessons prepared for this fall, should the Lord not come uh, in, the, in the rapture and, and poof me out of here, and hopefully poof you out of here, that you may be accounted worthy to escape in the great escape, uh, if I'm here in the fall, I'm going to I'm going to give some lessons and I'm going to try to make it um, uh, short. So and that, that, that's not going to be easy, but I'm, I'm going to try. So some of you may be interested in in uh, a Christian's perspective on secular academics. Okay, uh, I haven't worked on that in about two months. Let's get back to Matrix 2023 here. What are we doing in March here, Jeremiah, pertaining to these 52 categories? I'm going over them right now. I'm giving you a, a, a perspective. There, there are many ways to approach Bible study. And I have an approach that is basically very rudimentary here, okay? And, and, and we have about six categories here, and it all leads to agape, which is the first uh, category in this ministry on the playlist. Is agape. Agape is high love and high truth, and it exists, and you can own it. That, that's what this new covenant offer is. It's an offer to own agape. It, it's not an offer to own faith, per se. Why is that, Jeremiah? Because faith dies when you go in the rapture. There is no more faith. There was a guy on television I saw, I turned on years ago. He said that faith is, is forever. He, he, I don't know, he, he didn't pass the 4th to 8th grade Bible lesson from Sunday school. Paul says that faith, uh, it, it dies in terms of you having to exercise it. It doesn't mean that the Christian faith dies and the components of Christian faith. No, that, that, that goes on forever. The teachings of you uh, putting faith in Jesus Christ. But, but the activity of faith dies because you're going to be in heaven. And the goal of faith was to be in heaven. So why study faith when you're in heaven? You don't need it anymore. I don't, I don't need to tell you to be confident in going to heaven because you're in heaven. That's the point. Let's get back to the lesson germane here. We, 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 we have new covenant. We have sound doctrine, living bread, wisdom, Faith and agape, I want to talk about. Just a little bit more than we're going to get to living bread uh, uh, specifically. The new covenant is as a report of reality. Will you agree with reality? Will you, will you be wise and see the truth? Because God does not have anybody in heaven who does not love the truth. Period. End of story. That's why Jesus said, I am the truth. It's quite obvious that God can't stand lies. In Revelation 21, the Master says, the, uh, uh, the, the Scripture says that there's no liars in heaven. You can't make a lie in heaven, period. On earth, you can lie till the cow, cows come home. You can be a famous president or something like that in America. You can, or anywhere on this plateau. You, you, you can rise to the top by lying. The, the Quran says that, that Allah is the chiefest of deceivers. And, and of course, synonym for the word deceiver is liar. So the world is overwhelmed. We Protestants are overwhelmed. We're like Custer at the last stand. We are considered sheep for the slaughter based upon our surroundings. However, the gates of hell will never prevail against the church. However, the, 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 the system of 
of politicians and presidents and the UN and all these people, prime ministers and economic institutions, they are indeed dominating us big time. However, when it comes to preaching the gospel and owning God's love, they have nothing to do with that. Nothing. They can't. Let me give you an example. If you go out and you want to preach and the Lord wants you to preach, all of these devils and all these powers, they will disappear. They came to get our lovable Jesus Christ that we love and we think about constantly as our, our, our master and our friend. But we, we listen, we, when we go out, we might do what he did in the Garden of Gethsemane. When they came to get him, he said, I am, because they were looking for him. I guess it was kind of dark, and he, uh, where, where's Jesus? And they, he goes, I am, and they, it, what, what happened to them? Do you remember? They flew back to the ground. Jesus tossed them to the ground. So here's a man who's getting ready to be horribly crucified for a wretch like me, and he's going to suffer horribly, and, which is one of the main reasons why we love our Lord Jesus Christ and the Father who gave his, his only begotten Son. He, he, even though he's getting ready to go down for the count, as we say here in America, he shows power that is awesome. That, that's the same for us. When we go preaching somewhere, uh, whatever, and the Lord wants you to go save someone, uh, all these devils, do, they have nothing to do with your activity. If they get in the way, they're going to find themselves hurting for certain because God wants you to do what? He wants you to bind up the brokenhearted. And you can't bind up the brokenhearted if somebody is in the way. That's the point. The gates of hell will never prevail against the gospel being preached. You might go to jail. They might throw you around. Uh, we, we might lose a few members. Uh, a couple of them might be persecuted, uh, martyred, um, like Antipas. But, but the, what's the bottom line? The bottom line is, is that the church itself will never be prevailed against. Never. That's why the rapture brings in the hell on earth period. Why? Because he that restraineth is the church. I'm the restrainer of the, the, uh, the beast. The Lord in me working to bind up the brokenhearted uh, and, and people who are psychologically confused and troubled, I am their help. And, and if God wants me to go help Billy around the corner, you can bet your bottom whatever that nothing's going to get in my way. Because God wants us to bind up the brokenhearted. That's the first lesson in this ministry. Luke chapter 4. God's power, exousia, is upon me, dunamis, that I might preach the gospel and to bind up the brokenhearted. And to set at liberty those who are captive in chains psychologically. That's my job here. I have helped dozens of people in my life because the Lord is working through me to bind up their broken heart and they are changed. They are empowered to, to look at the devil's lies and to ignore them and to not have any effect on them anymore. And once again, you can take it to the bank as they say here in America, um, that there's no way that when God wants to help somebody, I, I have that movie Ben Hur. It's a good movie, um, and the, in the movie Ben Hur, uh, uh, the Lord wants to give Ben some water. Judah Ben Hur was his name, which means praise, a son of praise. So, so he, he he's going to give the, the, he's going to give uh, Judah some water which is also one of the, uh, the tribes of Israel, if not the main tribe of Israel. He, he, he goes to give Judah some water, and, 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 and one of the slave owners with a whip gets in the way. It's kind of funny because the Lord wants to give him some water. <laughs> it's kind of funny because 
the slave master is not going to get in the way of the point. And if he persists in trying to get in the way, he might find himself hurting for certain. That's the point. You can't get in the way of what God wants to do. It's absolute foolishness. That's a very warm moment in that movie, and it's poignant. That although Judah was going through a whole lot of trouble, it was time for him to get some refreshment and water, and nobody's going to get in the way. The same goes for the tribulation period and the beast they have on TV now. And, and there's a lot of fear mongering on the computer now. Ooh, this is going to happen. That's going to happen. Well, listen, the reason why they're doing that is because it does look ugly now. And you can tell it's the end of the world. However, it's not going to stop me. If, 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 if the Lord puts on my heart to go help sister so-and-so and she needs help, let, let me tell you something. Nothing's going to get in the way. John told, Jesus told John to take care of his mother. That means if anybody got in the way of, of his mother being taken care of, you have Almighty God who's going to probably open up a can and, and anybody gets in the way, you're hurting. They, they have a famous song here in America called Don't Mess With Bill. No, 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 no. And in spite of the fact we talk about uh, uh, taking up your cross here and, and being open to, to, to persecutions, such as John, John's Gospel, chapter 16, um, we, we're also here to rejoice in the moments that the Lord has put a shield about us. Christianity, is, Christianity gets a little complicated, doesn't it? So we have, so we have new covenant, which is, which is an agreement offer, from the authority, the, the, the head authority, then we have the, the terms of agreement. The, what, what are, what's the criteria for this agreement? How do I make this agreement successful and get back to the Garden of Eden again? And that's done by living bread and living bread alone, which are commandments. And those commandments bring life. That's what the master says. These commandments are life. You'll never see death when you speak these words and you hold on to them. That's why the master said, keep my living bread. Some people are going to start uh, uh, living and, 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 and on the road to salvation and they're going to shrink back to destruction because they stopped eating living bread and something got in the way such as greed, power, etc., or sensuality that's outside of marriage or something along those lines, and that's bad news. Living bread is fulfilling the, the sound doctrine requirements that the Lord has said what is good and what the Lord requires of you. And one of them is when the Master says, unless you repent. That goes back to unless. So anyone... Uh, Indefinite pronouns again. Where, where we don't know, goodwill towards you men. I, I hope things work out for you in hearing the gospel. I hope you want to love truth. I hope you want to love care and kindness. That's my hope for you human beings. That's what, means, that's what goodwill towards men means. Who's going to be wise? So we have the new covenant. We have the criteria to make that agreement to get back with God again. And, and, and the, the specifics are living bread in that sound doctrine in your Bible, in the new covenant, in the New Testament text. In the, is the testimony of Jesus Christ is the living bread. And, and when, you, when you eat that living bread, you're wise. You're wise to go to the River Jordan, get on your knees and say, Master, I want to serve the Son of the living God. You have millions of people who say that God has no Son. What have they just done? They've just cursed themselves. Because that's the number one thing to do is for Father God Creator to lead you to the Son. 
to love and serve the Son. That's called a wise person. That's wisdom, volition, and yield. And the person who puts confidence in all of this is called faithful, an overcomer. And this leads to the big prize, eternal life and having the love of Jesus Christ in your, in your heart forever. Snap, crackle, pop. Now I'm going to have one more video, and we're going to get into living bread. That's going to be it for the day. Oops. I'll be right back. Maranatha.